Hi everybody, welcome to a cold but sunny March day in Dublin City. This is my 10 year old Panasonic GF1 and this is Street Photo Diary. So the Panasonic GF1 came out in 2009 and I bought mine uh, approximately 10 years ago and when I got it, uh, I got a good deal on it. It was, I think I paid around 500 euro for it and that came with the 20 millimeter 1.7 lens which is an excellent lens and today you can pick these up second hand for around 100 euro. I've seen them on eBay for as little as 80 euro and as much as 150, so it kind of depends on the accessories that come with it. So on top here, that's just my GoPro, so you can see the camera's point of view while I'm going around shooting. Uh, you can actually get a, um, you can get a viewfinder for it. Um, the camera itself doesn't have viewfinder, you're just limited to the screen. Street Photo Diary has kind of become about shooting street photography with older cameras. I have kind of collected a lot of older and kind of classic digital cameras over the years. And the way I see it, it's, it's almost like um, people who collect classic cars. A lot of these older cameras have their own kind of quirks and things that just make them unique in their own special way. And also too, some of the cameras that I shoot with have kind of become somewhat iconic in their own respect. So for example, I've shot I've shot a previous episode with the Nikon D700, which uh, I absolutely love. Uh, I have the original Canon 5D, which was kind of a game-changing camera in and of itself. And with this, the Panasonic GF1. The GF1 was one of the first mirrorless cameras in that particular kind of form factor. Uh, and for me, personally, it was my first mirrorless camera. Uh, it changed the way I shot and it, it, became, it became something of a, a major shake-up for me in the way I did photography. So there's actually something pretty cool I want to show you while I'm here and that is there's this uh, building that's kind of just here and it's um, Metalworks. Um, I don't know if it's still active or not but they always have really cool street art on the building and every couple of months they change it up and at the moment it's pretty cool so I want to take a quick picture of it while I'm here but, but I also just wanted to show you because it is cool.
here just <laughs> in case I don't miss anything. So like all cameras, it has both good and bad points. Um, when shooting street photography, it's actually pretty responsive. Um, it can, can be walking along, you take a shot, and it'll focus and it'll get the shot. There's very little delay, there's no shutter lag. The focusing is really quick on it. Um, and another thing too, the Micro Four Thirds sensor actually has an advantage in that because it's uh, that little bit smaller, you can shoot wide open or fairly wide open on the lens and still get a fairly good depth of field, which has the advantage of if you know, you're know you in a dynamic situation when taking street photography, you're walking along, everything's moving, and if you don't nail the focus, uh, the chances are it'll still be reasonably sharp. So that's kind of one of the advantages of it. Um, there is no viewfinder on the camera, so uh, you can actually get a viewfinder first, so it would go in here where I have my little GoPro. Um, it's not great. <laughs> um, generally, I just use the screen. I'm happy with the screen. It doesn't bother me that much. Although, having said that, in very bright sunlight, it can be a little hard to see, but it's generally fine for framing. Um, image quality is pretty good for such an old camera, um, except kind of dynamic range is not good. Um, if you overexpose slightly, um, you can maybe pull back maybe half a stop of clipped information, but not really. And it's usually the quality is quite bad. You can, it goes kind of luminous. Um, in terms of this lens, the 20mm 1.7 lens is an excellent lens, uh, both for street photography and, well, anything really. Um, the 20mm focal length is the equivalent of 40mm full frame, so it's kind of a handy compromise between 35mm and 50mm, which are the two typical street photography um, focal lengths. And so I find it, it's, it actually, it's, a, it's just right. <laughs> it's kind of in the Goldilocks zone. In terms of settings, I generally shoot in shutter priority when I'm shooting street photography with this. And I set my shutter speed to 1000. So the reason for that is I want to kind of freeze the action. Um, I also have ISO turned on. Now the ISO, it will let you set the limit. So I have it set to ISO 800 because any higher than that, the image quality just kind of falls apart on this. Um, but with the 1.7 lens, you actually get away with that. So uh, that's generally how I shoot when shooting street photography. I will occasionally switch to aperture priority if I want to control the depth of field a bit more. Um, but as I said, most of the time I'm shooting in shutter priority. that's pretty much it for this episode of street photo diary thanks for watching and i hope you found this useful don't forget to like share and subscribe and check out my patreon feed for extra content and behind the scenes extra tutorials and whatnot and you also help support this channel so thanks for watching see you next time